We just passed the 20 year anniversary of the release of Next Friday. And today we have a special guest joining us to talk about her experience working on this classic film. Ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Rodriguez. How are you, Lisa? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank good. you. Yeah, it's great to hear your voice. I'm also known for my friends out there as Carla from Next Friday. Let's yeah. jump right into it. What do you say? Cool. Sure. All right, Let's cool. do this. Absolutely. So where did you grow up? I grew up in San Francisco, oh, born in New York. Bay Area. Yes. Okay. Okay. I could see that. And when did you realize you wanted to get into acting? Um, I, hmm, I guess I got a scholarship to come to go to um, a special school. Um, her name is Ivana Chubbuck Studios on Melrose. And after that one year of this, you know, having my scholarship going to school, um, I was working at Bloomingdale's. I booked next Friday. And I just said, wow, this is really easy. Oh, damn, just <laughs> off top, huh? Yeah, because I, I went initially... I went to an agency in San Francisco, a look agency for um, modeling, and they're like, "No, you're an actress." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay," and I booked the you know the movie of the week that same day too. That's so crazy. it's yeah. <laughs> so before you booked for Friday uh, next Friday, were you familiar with the first Friday film? I was. Yes, it's a classic. I love. Okay. Um, first Friday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, did you have to uh, audition against other girls, or do you know the process that it took to? Get absolutely, Carla? absolutely. Um, my manager at the time, Valentino Fazzari, um, um, got me into an agency called I named um, Susan Smith and Associates, and they they did something where they hit pocket someone instead of signing them. They want to see how you do first, and so that's how I yeah I started um, auditioning. Um, and I went, I had the flu at the time. I had like four auditions and I met the girl, Carmen, who's supposed to be the lead actress, right? And she, she was like, oh, you know, don't worry about it. Maybe it could be one of the girls. And it's, you know, she was doing her table read mm. <laughs> and they switched and they made me, you know, I did an audition with Cube and the director and my casting directors and um, I booked it. I actually was making fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> and the director came to me and Steve Carl was like, Lisa, you know, don't do that. <laughs> and um, they liked the fact that I was, you know, funny. They liked the fact that I fit um, exactly what they were looking for. They were looking for like a Sama Hayek, darker version, okay. Hispanic. Go ahead. Who isn't? <laughs> no, who isn't? <laughs> no, That's yeah. That's funny. <laughs> okay. What were your first impressions of Ice Cube? I was scared. No, really? <laughs> I was always scared. Oh my God! He came with his entourage, and I was just sitting there. He didn't even smile, and I'm like, Oh my God! You know his bodyguards. <laughs> and um, I was sitting next to ba I forgot her name. She plays Baby D in the movie. Oh yeah, uh, Lady of Rage. Yeah, I think yeah, she's yeah, a rapper. Yeah, so I said, and she was so sweet to me. She was like, Oh girl, don't you know, don't get nervous and. You know, he's going to be okay. I'm like, he's scaring me. <laughs> oh. This is 20 years ago. It's Ice Cube. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that was her first acting role also, uh, Baby D. I think so. Or I'm mistaken, yeah, because she, like you said, came from the rap world. Um, mm -hmm. Someone else who, who, who had their big breakout role in this movie was Mike Epps. Uh, to this day, I think is one of the funniest human beings on earth. Um, but what were your experiences when you first met him? Oh, he's hilarious. First of all, everyone on the set were amazing, and um, they were so funny, you know? <laughs> and um, I just thought he was a funny guy, um, a wonderful person, human being, um, just great. I think he was trying to ask me out during the, um, you know, the, what's it called? <laughs> you know, the um, House of Blues, we had an after party there. Okay. And he's just like rolling up a joint just right next to a cop. <laughs> and he's like, we could be like Pub Daddy and Jennifer Lopez. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that movie had a lot of improv, especially involving him. Is is that safe to say? That is true. Yeah, that is safe to say. Um, I had my little improv 
um, I was supposed to say that line, you got knocked the fuck out when he, when he, when he uh, I guess when he fell off the roof. Okay. And I just couldn't say, it was like 20 takes, I couldn't say, oh my god, it's Chris Tucker's line, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Now let me let me ask you about someone, a very talented person that we lost just too soon. I remember him first from a movie called Kids, which was just an amazing masterpiece of cinema. Uh, Justin Pierce, who played Roach mm -hmm. in the movie, yeah. uh, that the, yeah. the little white dude who worked at yeah. the No, I actually knew him. Oh, I really? actually knew him. I, well, I saw him. We had a um, we went to Las Vegas. Uh, when we stayed at the Bellagio. Um, we were doing a signing. He was supposed to sit next to me, and I was wondering where was he? You know, the whole time. They in casting. Everyone told. They didn't tell me until like a month later that he hung himself. Ugh. Yes, and we were in the, He was supposed to go out to dinner with us, and I don't know. They said that they went through his phone, and he was finding his ex-wife or his wife at the time, and I don't know. And he just hung himself. Oh. It's really sad. Yeah. Do you want to share how much money you made on that movie? Yeah, I only got fifteen thousand um, dollars. I think everyone got, a, you know, not as much, um, but they got something on the back end. Mm -hmm. And the person that was managing managing me at the time, um, we ha we actually had a falling out. But I called him and I said, you know what? Why don't you negotiate this for me this one time? <laughs> and I got fucked. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I got screwed really bad. Uh. Yeah, so we got fifteen thousand, nothing on the back end, and Cube and the casting director Kim Harding, she was great. He said to him, you know, hook her up with my people, and I, I wish I did. I met with his people, the firm. It was a management company, and they were like big powerhouses, and you know, in LA, you know, and they had like Limp Bizkit at the time. They had um, all these amazing people. Backstreet Boys, remember them? Oh yeah. <laughs> they had Will Smith's company. Oh my God, they were huge. And they wanted to represent me and I was just loyal to my old manager. And that's that. <laughs> Damn, dude. Now, were, were there any promises made to you that weren't kept or, you know, with, with this movie? No, yeah, not at all, no. No, there were no. Okay. Yeah, but so you understood they're, at the time. Great, were, you understood at the no, time. Cube, like I said, Q was amazing. Q was like hook her up. She he he knew that I didn't have an agent at the time. I did, and then they dropped me. My manager dropped me at the same time. So I'm like, I got this movie. Someone needs to negotiate. So I called my old manager. You know, yeah. so he saw what was happening. He was like, you know what? After this movie, you know, have a meeting with Kim. And I did, and she actually reached out to a lot of cast, um, a lot of agencies, because she's a casting director. Mm -hmm. And um, I, she set up meetings for me, and that's how I got my agency mm -hmm. through her. What was your favorite <laughs> scene? What made you laugh the most? Besides you trying to say you got knocked the fuck out and did not come in. Oh, what made me laugh the most? Um, I think it's um, Kim Whitley. <laughs> she made me laugh. Is she the aunt? Oh, Huh? Is she when the, she was I, like, pick, when she, you know, when she was, she's the auntie. Yeah. I mean, oh my auntie, goodness. She made me laugh. She Ooh. made me laugh a lot. I love her. Yeah, I love I'm everyone so on the set. There was no one that I didn't dislike. Everyone were was really good. They were really great with me. You mm -hmm. know. Why didn't you, anything else pop up after um, the movie? Um, I guess poor management again. Um, I didn't go with Cube's people, which I should have. Mm -hmm. um, and even his wife was so supportive, his, his wife's mother, mother-in-law, like everyone was just so nice to me on set. Um, yeah, it's poor management, definitely poor management and, you know, not having the right people um, behind you. Mm -hmm. And that's where, I mean, at the time my agent was being, um, I think he was walked out of his agency. <laughs> he was escorted out, something like an entourage thing, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh shit, that happened to me. And that was my agent. Mm -hmm. So everything kind of fell apart after that. I didn't. My 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 parents got really sick. My mom got really sick, mm. and I just moved to LA. Yeah, no, I'm. Yeah, I went to LA and moved to um, New York. Okay. And that's where my mother um, passed away in 2006. Oh. So yeah, the last thing I did was in 2004, and that was um, It Ain't Easy with okay. Clifton Powell and the guy that plays Kinky and um, Glenn Plummer. From South Central, yeah, colors and yeah. and speed, yeah, um, yeah. So that was the last thing I did in two thousand four.
I do have some good news. Oh, please share it for the <laughs> yes, world. Yes, I will be doing um, a feature in June. Okay. So you guys can, you know, yeah, that's a good nice. thing. Hell <laughs> if you guys yeah. could keep on following me on oh. Instagram and, you know. You already know we will continue to do yes. that. Yes, thank you for supporting me have too. You ever, have you ever thought of like reality show or podcast or you know, I was thinking about that. Mm. I was definitely thinking about a podcast because I love mm. to talk about everything, especially politics and just everything. I've been doing this for 10 years and I will tell you, you know, just for doing this for me, if you ever need anything, little, small, regarding podcasting, I, I know it all, I've done it all, and I'd be glad to help you out. Oh, thank you. Yeah, seriously, you. seriously. <laughs> Real talk, no strings yeah. attached, you know. But yeah, <laughs> I definitely would suggest doing something like that because nowadays it's you don't have to really – thankfully, it's in the, unfortunately, in the early 2000s, 90, late 90s, you had to rely on management and things like that. But now you can right. literally take your own – uh, career into your hands, you know, which is what I'm doing, which is what my partner's doing that Absolutely. I'm with right now. And, and I know you could do that because I, I know I'm not the only one that six months ago was like, where is the girl <laughs> from next Friday? Where is she? Where is she? And uh, it took me that long. And finally, I'm glad that, you know, we finally oh. had a chance to talk. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm really upset about this YouTuber named Lionel B um, talking mad shit about me. That is where not, I watch. Yeah, it's not yeah. cool because, you know, SAG sees this, you know. Initially, he was trying to help me, right? Because mm -hmm. I, okay, so what happened was I fell down um, in my uh, rent stabilized apartment on 79th York in East End. And mm -hmm. for people who don't know what that is, it's Upper East Side, New York, very, very nice neighborhood okay. i lived on bloomberg's block okay <laughs> just five blocks from him <laughs> and the Koch brothers and so long story short it was in my family for like 60 something years um my father became ill um aps got involved they promised him getting him a new place or whatever and so it was under his name i put the apartment under his name after my aunt died my mother died in that apartment i got hurt um, I had a cervical sprain, torn ligament in my neck from their stairs, their faulty stairs. They had marble, um, slippery stairs. We had It was like four years ago it happened, yeah. So I fell down at the same time I was going through a custody battle. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so let me, yeah, I'd rather, I want to tell my story because everyone has it all confused. So I went to court. So he had a lawyer representing him with the apartment. So he got confused. My stepfather's Turkish, right? And they just said he has dementia, and they just put him in a home in Rhinebeck, which is northern California, uh, northern New York. And literally every day, I'm crying for my kids and my dad. Like all this is over a fucking apartment, and mm. because I fell down on my neck, you know. Yeah. So that's why I did the GoFundMe because I went to Supreme Court and I went over the judge's head. I got it signed, and she told me I had to come up with fifty thousand dollars or forty nine thousand mm. dollars within two weeks. That's why I did a GoFundMe, mm. you know. So, but I didn't get the fifty thousand. I got four thousand. I used that because I was homeless, mm -hmm. and um, I was just, you know, staying in people's, you know, my friends' homes. And then I used it for Airbnb to finish my job in New York. And then I moved out here to California. God, it must have been hard being homeless and seeing it, walking past a DVD store and seeing you on the cover of. One of the well, no, the thing is, you guys, I've always worked. After acting, I little, I only did for like a year or two. After that, I was working retail. I had my own businesses. I had an art gallery. I had, you know, I was doing okay. Then my mother got sick, and I yeah. moved to New York. Then I had a baby. Then I had another baby. My aunt dies in 2008. And I was working retail. I was working for Saks Fifth Avenue, um, Bloomingdale. That's what I've been doing while my ex was going to school. He worked for Homeland Security. So it's not like, you know, that, that's it. You know, I yeah. do want to go back into the acting and it's going to happen. It's going to, you know, in June. And awesome. I think people need Puerto Rican, more Puerto Rican women out there. You oh, know, yes. I don't think they're Mexican, but, you know, I represent everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. This, this, is, this is definitely your time. You had a, you had a uh, uncredited role in Napoleon Dynamite? It's not me. Oh, so it's not you. No, it's not. Oh. I don't know why it's even there. Oh, wow. Wiki, yeah. See, that's why. You know how many times I've been called out on my Wikipedia stuff on this show? Wikipedia oh is God. not credible, people. It may, it's, it's, not, it's some. Oh, no. And Wikipedia, they have me as Mexican, um, I'm Mexican and what? something else. Cuban. I'm Cuban and Mexican. Oh or something like that. I'm like, what? I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> oh I mean, God. I don't mind being Mexican. And that's a beautiful mix, actually. <laughs> Dang. 
Let me ask you, what, what advice would you give a young woman who wants to try her hand in acting in Hollywood? It's all a really good foundation, number one. You have to have a really good foundation and try not to, um, if it's, if they're saying, um, you know, come over first or something like that, like mm. hashtag me too, don't do it. It's, uh. it's phony, phony, phony. Get an agent. That's what I'm trying to get back. Mm. Get an agent to represent you. And they're the ones who send you out on auditions. Mm. And so just, you know, there's a lot of rejections, you know, but if you, you, you have, that's why you have to have a really good foundation, mm -hmm. you know, and just really get into like yoga and work out and just like really focus. It's a tough, tough business, you know, mm. and even me coming back to it is even tougher. Do you keep in touch with any of the other cast members? No, I wish I, well, I think, no, they're so busy. Um, I had at one time Steve Quad on my Facebook, um, and he still is, and I just need, I just need a referral. You know, he's like, oh, you know, you know, have them call me. It's, that's, that's not how it works. Mm. You know, they're not going to call for <laughs> <a> referral. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you have to call for me, have your assistant or whatever. Mm. It's like, come on. At least you could do is just make a fucking phone call mm. and get me representation, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, well, um, and then that call, Jacob man. Vargas. Oh, Vargas, who played uh, uh, Joker. Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, um, he's all my, he's really busy. He's so busy. Mm. Like, hella busy. Damn, dude. He seems so. like he was pretty, like a lot of improv also. He was. He, oh, it was a lot He was of probably improv. my favorite, you know, character in, in the show, in the movie. Yeah, it was a lot. A <laughs> lot of character. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. The only thing that was probably scripted, I mean, well, really scripted was my character because he just yeah. add me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> But the the one where he falls down, they want they wanted me to have a you know a comedy thing, uh -huh. and I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I can't do it. Oh well, I did. I made up something when he says, um, "Should I six nine? I go, "No, it's star six eight or something like that. Oh, I, see a little I made that up. Old <laughs> stupid. That was my little <laughs> comedy thing. <laughs> These kids nowadays have no, what star six eight? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Dang kids, you know, I know it's so old. Yeah. <laughs> the movie's really old, but you know it's really prevalent. Oh, it's like not any, prevalent. Prevalent. Anytime, <laughs> e yeah, it's re so relevant. Go ahead. It's so relevant. I'm sorry, I'm drinking. Um, it's so relevant. And oh my god, relevant. <laughs> <laughs> I have ice in my mouth. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, it really is. It's like on TV. It's on BET. It's on Bravo. It's on Stars. Yeah. It's on every freaking channel. You can think of it's yeah, on, yeah. and you know how it feels going to work and like, oh, which aren't you? On oh TV? my god, that must <laughs> uh, that must drive you nuts. And okay. I go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know where that where that with with honor. You know what I'm saying? I know it's probably feels like crap sometime, but where that with honor. I mean, this movie is going to be around forever, even in 70 years after you and I are not here. I mean, it's it's a it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. So yeah. Where that with I mean, after honor. after that, I did like Jessica. You know, it was Jessica Alba's first villain. You okay. know, and because my mother was ill, um, I couldn't do i couldn't you know do other roles mm -hmm. it wasn't like you know, they were pouring it i just couldn't yeah. because my mother was sick yeah. and so i moved you know like i would be at her you know one of her appointments here in riverside mm -hmm. um and i had an audition and they're like we don't care i'm like i can't do this australian accent right now <laughs> uh, yeah and I drive two <laughs> hours they're, to they're, they're, why while she gets her procedure you could i'm like this is how they were they don't i would does not care yeah. you know what I'm saying? it's business yeah. So that's why, you know, my family. Basically, I, I love taking care of my family. And mm -hmm. she did pass in 2006 and my aunt in 2008. Wow. Yeah. Bless both of them. Thanks. Real talk, real talk. What's next for you besides, you know, um, July, your series or your June. feature? June. I have a feature in June. Okay. Um, and that's exciting. And your possible podcast that I just threw back in here. <laughs> yes, head. I would love to do something <laughs> like that. Absolutely, my God. Yeah, it's not really as hard as it probably sounds. Um, it's really nowadays, it's really, really simple. And if you just sit yourself down for, you know, three, four hours for a couple of days, you could literally pick it up and, and be on your way. And, and I know people will tune in. I'm telling you, they'll tune mm -hmm. in. So, I know. Just plant that seed. Yeah, but... 
plant that seed and and more important how do you get paid though that's where i want that's I mean, where you, you got to get on youtube right away uh you got to yeah. get advertisements and we, we could we don't want to bore everybody with this but like i said yeah, if you I ever know. need anything <laughs> like, okay no real talk i got you if you ever need hot it just, just yeah just, <laughs> just hot day, talk yeah so right <laughs> but yeah no and, and more importantly because you did mention whatever that dude is that has that video out there on youtube because let's be honest when you pull your oh name up, yeah i'm no, sorry did i didn't even finish what i was saying with that go for it no finish up no you Oh, sorry about that. Oh, so, um, so yeah, because I didn't do his, um, his interview, mm -hmm. like what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Um, he bought me a ticket to go to Florida, but it's like, it was like, what kind of, I, don't, I never even heard of this airline frontier. Oh, hell, that's right next to spirit. <laughs> and, and I was passing kidney stones. I was in the hospital Damn. three times in San yeah. Francisco, except in uh, September 9th or something like that. Right. Do you know? He he got upset and put that um, other video about being cursed and that I'm battling um, yeah. substance abuse, which is totally false, yeah. and then that I'm battling a deathly ill, whatever, yeah. kidney infection or something like that. I'm like, oh my god, what yeah. is he doing? And so people could be really fucked up in this business, you oh, know. Dude. Yeah. And so that's why it's good to have representation mm -hmm. for anyone that's out there who wants to be in this business, including my my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a very good foundation, you know, um, at home. Mm -hmm. And you also need um, people to represent you because, you know, you, you, you meet all kinds of weirdos out there, you know, and they will try to, you know, they're weird. They will mm -hmm. try to fuck you up, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so that's what I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh my God. I was, I, I told him like, this is horrible. Mm. Well, and people are listening to him, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing with, with doing things like this and you should, and you getting the importance of you getting on YouTube as well is to push those videos down the way to where they just disappear into another sea of YouTube video. Basically get on YouTube and you just start creating content and it'll eventually just push all the, all that bad crap away. Um, Cause yeah, you don't want that to be the first thing that pops up on YouTube when someone YouTubes your name. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm getting people coming to me from all over. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's defamation of my character. Yeah. You know, and I just don't know his real name in order to sue him. Mm -hmm. Literally, I just need his real name and his address. Huh. <laughs> if anyone out there <laughs> could give me, follow me, Instagram, <laughs> oh, Lisa six four four four. Yes, but if you and know, please it's... <laughs> help 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 me help help Carla out. Mm. Okay, I mean it won't be hard to find him. I'm not going to suggest giving his address out to any of our listeners out there, but if you want to direct message it to her, you know, go ahead yes, and do that. Yes, correct. Don't so I can have him. lawyers yeah. exactly. But yeah, they don't know they don't know his um, address or phone or um, or um, name. I have oh, his okay. phone number. That's all I have. Yeah. Hmm. His real name. But he goes by the Lionel B Show. So oh, I don't all know. All right. Well. This has been really, really cool. Thank you so very, very much. Um, once again, give your Instagram out there. And, sure. Yeah. It's, um, oh, and thank you, by the way. Um, it's Lisa six and three fours. Six and three four six four. Yes, and I am four, not four. homeless. Okay, I hope you guys lis were listening <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> I just signed a lease. I live in California, yeah. and I'm trying to get. And I have a movie coming out. Well, not movie coming. Out. I'm filming a feature in June. Yes. So that's good yes. That's great. She is not homeless no matter what that dude tries to And still to say. follow me so I can keep you guys posted. Yeah. Yes, yes. Please do that. It's been a pleasure. Thank I hope you. we can uh, do this again. Like I said, um, uh, if you ever need anything, you're, I'm an email away. I'm a text away. And um, I'd love to help out in any way possible. All right. Thank All you right, so cool. much. All right, cool. You have thank a good you. rest of the night. It's been a pleasure, okay? Yes, of course. All thank right. You guys. Talk to you soon. Bye, Lisa. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, Dre, that was so awesome. Um... I can't lie. When she was eating the ice, yeah, I closed my eyes for a little while, yeah, and I was just like, "Clean the seat." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to clean the seat. <laughs> Woo! And then you got all the pictures going. I mean, she's a beautiful woman, dude. Like, yeah. she, and she was hot in Friday. Yeah. Ad, okay, let's go. You've seen all all three of the Fridays. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. Um, do you, so you're familiar with all three of the leading ladies not the last one so much okay right. i mean i remember it was that the ladies pimp the pimp's lady right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. she yeah, worked yeah. in the um in the in the store yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i remember the first one mm -hmm. yeah. yeah Nia long she was bad i watched that one all day every yeah. day oh yeah that yeah. was a classic she was bad and and if you ask me in the trilogy of the movie yeah the one we just interviewed lisa rodriguez that's your favorite the baddest of them all yeah i've always loved latinas 
Okay. I've always been. Well, a, I'm half Puerto Rican, so. Wait, aren't you? And Cuban, though, and right? And Cuban. So why'd you leave out the Cuban, fool? Yeah, well, it's because uh, I didn't want to. Why'd you leave out the Cuban, B? I didn't want to bring it up. We were talking about well, she's Puerto Rican. I'm half Puerto Rican. And I mean, you got to be careful, ah. but she might cut you. <laughs> oh, How many times have you heard, I'm Cuban, B? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Yeah, it's like, yo, I used to say it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Cuban, B. Cuban, B. <laughs> <laughs> I had that sample. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, we gotta watch some 420 movies hey, around 420. Maybe we'll have a show dedicated to 420. I want to do a comedy movies. show, just 420 ish. Ooh. Yeah, I was gonna do Cinco de Mayo, but I think it's gonna be hard to put together. I might do 420. 420 is better, yeah. more peaceful, because Cinco de Mayo brings a lot of alcohol, and you don't want you don't want that type of vibe. You want more weed, like more of the chill we'll vibe. Have back to back, we'll have Ooh. 420 and then Cinco de Mayo, Ooh, like damn, that. Damn, dude, it's going down right here on Super Audio Network, eh? Hey, real talk, man. Hey, hey uh, let's play a couple of minutes of music. Take like two minute break, guys. We're gonna go pee, and we're going to get right back into it. We're going to be chatting with author Frank Lewis. He spent 14 years in prison after he shot two ladies in an attempted carjacking near usc it was a huge story back in the early 80s he's now a different man and he has a great story to tell and we're going to tell it right here on super audio network dusty vision radio i'm here with my boy dre day all day every thursday 7 p.m pacific standard time we'll be back in like two minutes peace <laughs> 